Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, and welcome to a special interview episode of The Strain. We're interviewing Ruta Gedmentas here, who plays Dutch on the show. I am your host, Jackie Borowski, and with me is Stephen Lemieux. Hey, guys. Good to be here. Hi, Ruta. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Hi. Um, Thanks for having me. (laughs) So you're calling from London. Yes. Yes. So it's nighttime there. It's early here, so we're doing an early feed here. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, it's better no. to return to you guys than you seeing me at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, no, this is actually this is actually totally okay for me. Um, so the first question I have is your character isn't in the books. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that they added another female to the group, which was yeah. really that was really exciting for me. Um, do you feel any sort of responsibility being? Uh, a character that's not in the books and a character that is like one of the new cool characters added? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I felt the responsibility of, of kind of living up to what everyone else was doing. But I think that's one of the show's strong points is that they've got such a diverse cast. Um, when I when I got this job, uh, it was because Dutch originally was an American guy and mm. uh, Carlton decided that he thought, well, I mean, it was the whole group thing, but they all wanted another female in the show. And um, so they so they called me up and said, would you would you come and, and do something with this character? They didn't really know where it was going to go yet. Um, they just knew they had this idea and they wanted to see what I brought to it and what it would bring to the group. And then we progressed from there. And it just so happened that she kind of fit in with the group really well. And... Because obviously she's not in the book, so I, everyone was like, how is this going to work? Because it's not really the story. And then it seems to have been like a cat amongst the pigeons and kind of spurred on loads of other storylines. So it was it was pretty good. Well, that's good. Um, <laughs> I, um, I was wondering, and this is kind of, I guess, a silly question, but your character is like a technological genius. How, yeah. <laughs> how close are you to knowing that much about technology? I mean, I know I don't know anywhere near as much, but I'm a bit of a geek. Um, I do I do like my computers and my gadgets and things, but um, I'm not. Yeah, I don't I don't understand code. I mean that that stuff is like when I'm learning those lines. It's it's I might as well be learning another language. It's kind of crazy, but it's they they've got some really good advisors on the show, and that was that was something that I really wanted to make sure what's happening because I was like I don't people are going to watch this they're you know the kind of audience watching this as well they're going to know everything about it so I was like I don't want to be saying some kind of you know roundabout stuff but apparently what I'm saying is actually factual (laughs) it sounds good Um, to me I don't I'm not actually very good with that Steve might be able to speak better to that because he understands it more because I wear glasses Uh, no that is not it (laughs) You know that stuff. I wear glasses too, Steve. <laughs> I, I know. I I don't really know all that stuff, honestly. Though I feel like there's there's so many shows that do it do a poor job with trying to research the stuff, and this is not one of them. When you're watching it, you're not like really. You're you're like, oh, okay, I can see how that works. Like the Emergency Channel, like that's kind of a cool concept that they that they came up with yeah, and put right. in there. Um, it's definitely plausible, but with your character. You're a bit of a mystery because you're you're introduced as kind of the 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 chaotic neutral. Um, is she going to be a bad guy? Is she going to be a good guy character? And then kind of you get thrown into this gas station with all the main characters, and that's when you kind of decide that oh okay well she's in the bread truck with the rest of them. And <laughs> what was it? What was it like? Like what what did they what did they kind of direct you to do to display such a mysterious aura? Because people really didn't know what to expect from you. I mean, you're the only character, honestly, as she talked about, you're not in the books, you're the only character that people just honestly have know nothing about. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, the point of Dutch as well. I think that's her main 
characteristic is that she's this mercurial, unpredictable girl. And that's what we wanted from her, that you don't know what she's going to do from one minute to the next. And it's kind of nice because she's kind of growing up in the show when you first meet her she's a little bit of an idiot and you kind of don't you don't really like like her <laughs> um and it's kind of she's supposed to be someone that can just come in and take hold of any situation and you just you're not sure where she's going to go with it so that's what we were working towards and it's kind of a really fun thing to play because you're not um bound by any constrictions at all we could go anywhere with dutch because she's she's just such a kind of firecracker she can do anything and that's what we tried to um instill in the first few episodes uh with, with this she's kind of one minute she's crying the next minute she's laughing and then she's cracking a joke and then she's just like being mean and we wanted to give her the whole range of emotions so that it was very obvious that she's kind of she's kind of a little bit off the wall, and uh, and it means there's a, a a long way for her to go, to kind of fit in with everybody else. Did, I mean, oh, go ahead. Did they write a history for your character, or did you develop one yourself? Because when you're speaking with Eldridge Palmer, like everything he says has to hit home in yeah. some respect. So, can you tell us a little bit about the history of your character that we might not know? Um. Well, a lot, of, a lot of it comes out in, in the episode that you've just seen um, on the rooftop with Fett. Uh, that was developed with uh, Regina Carrado, who um, she's like the main writer for my character. She's a wonderful, wonderful writer. And when I came onto the show, um, they, we've, we all were really collaborative um, to, to make her. And they had their own ideas about her backstory, and then I brought mine, and then we kind of merged them together. And I mean, it will still grow and we'll still discover things, um, but we've got a pretty solid storyline. And, you know, the, all the stuff about my dad um, is, is really Dutch's kind of th through line. It's that's why she got into hacking. That's what she does this for. She lost her dad when she was 12. So, you know, she feels close to him every time she kind of breaks a hack and I don't even know if that's the right terminology. <laughs> she breaks that's okay. a hack. Sounds, I'm really sorry if everyone good. knows everything about this. Um, can you tell me what the right terminology is? Um, every time she succeeds in doing whatever she wants to do, um, she's she feels kind of closer to her dad. She feels like he might be proud of her. And then when she realizes that she's actually contributed to this horrendous spread of this virus, um, then I think she starts to grow up and realize that the world doesn't revolve around her and uh, her dad probably wouldn't be so proud of her. Well, I liked that scene because uh, you're right, the character had been sort of a mystery up until that point and then we finally get some grounding and we find out she's uh, she's kind of a misfit just like everybody else there, yeah. which she fits in in the way that she's a misfit. Um, I also, I asked, we had a, Ke an interview with Kevin um, and I asked him, what does he think is going on between Dutch and Vasily? And I was wondering from your point of view, because he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it seems um, romantic, but it's but it's not almost. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think from from what we what we know right now, um, I think they just are kind of kindred spirits. They see they recognize something in each other. And I think that there's the kind of like living on the outside of society where people kind of judge you straight away and mm -hmm. um and they kind of feel they they connected in that there's there's something kind of painful in both of them that they're running away from mm -hmm. and that they use their own worlds to get through it and dutch is incredibly defensive like she goes on the defensive all the time if somebody says anything to her she's she'll just be like i don't need you in my life and i think fett recognizes that and he's not going to be put off by it so he pursues her and I think for Dutch, that's unusual because most people just reject her. So she's kind of forming an attachment because she's not being rejected by this guy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, who knows where it will go. Um, but I know that it, it's, it's been fun and Kevin's just brilliant to work with. And it was always just, and I was just always in stitches constantly on set with him. So it, I really hope they do develop our storyline more so I get to spend more time on set with him. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Do you have any like experiences from set that you think would fans like care to hear about? Like fun pranks that they might have played on you or anything like the first interaction with the cast when you came in? Uh, 
pranks wise, I'm not sure about pranks. I mean, I yeah. So I had the um, oh, I can tell you a secret. Um, oh. On my first scene, because Dutch was supposed to be an American guy, mm -hmm. but then they made her a girl. <laughs> and uh, but I was actually American in that first scene, and we had to <laughs> redub that scene. So when you go back and watch it, you'll see that like my voice is coming out independently of the way my lips are moving because I actually did that scene in American. But then we decided to make Dutch English because they love the they love the show being really metropolitan, people being from everywhere and all walks of life. So they were like, well, you're English, why aren't we using that? So um, that's kind of cool. I mean, when I watch it, I cringe and I'm like, oh my god, that doesn't look like my my voice. Um, <laughs> but oh, no one's really picked up on it. Um, if anything, people have said that my English accent is really bad, which is really funny because I'm English. So <laughs> to, you, to you people saying that on Twitter, I'm English. <laughs> um, can you can you like kind of give us a sample of your American accent so we know it too? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you knew we were gonna ask for it. Oh god, um, no. <laughs> you, you can watch you can watch my past TV shows. You'll see it on there. <laughs> too much pressure now. That's okay. Um... I actually, I like the fact that, I think that was a good choice. I like the fact that she's English because it, it does make the characters, the characters are such a diverse group of people. It, it does give that, like a little flavor to it. And that makes her more mysterious because you're like, why is this person who is English here? New York is so culturally diverse as well. It would be, it wouldn't represent that, that society if you didn't have people from all over. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really proud of the show for that. Um, there's There's a kind of, a blind casting I think they do they just sort of get the, the right person for the job as well um, which I think is wonderful that that's happening more and more with American TV hopefully it will happen more and more in British TV too. Speaking of TV you've been on uh, the Tudors and the Borgia, Borgias um, how is it is this your first sci-fi show um, how is it different from that because those are period pieces. Yeah I mean I've done I've done bits and pieces that um, is this a sci-fi show? Is it sci-fi? I don't know what you can um, characterize the show as. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of like a, a big budget American TV show, this is my first sort of sci-fi horror drama, don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing to work on. The sets are incredible. The amount of detail that the art department put in, it's like, even if they know we probably won't use that area of set. It is absolutely dressed uh, it, it, to, to, you know, every single detail is thought about. So we could go anywhere and do anything and it feels really imaginative and, and wonderful. Um, so coming onto this show, I was completely spellbound by it. So Trakian's Pawn Shop was just, um, I walked in and I was like, I can't believe that this isn't actually on a street in New York. Uh, it was just so much detail. And there'd be these steel girders over the top of the ceiling. And I'd go and I'd be like, wow, where'd you get these from? And then I'd knock them, they'd be wood painted. And I was like, wow, you guys are incredible. Um, so yeah, it was, it was amazing to come onto this. And I, I remember the first day walking out of my trailer at lunch and I was just, I was asking one of the crew members what the vegetarian lunch was. And I just heard this little voice pipe up saying, oh, it's, it's a pie, it's really good. And I turned around and there's one of the vampires with straggly hair and blood everywhere. <laughs> I was just oh my God. I was like, I'm so freaked out right now. And then I'd walk into the canteen, there'd be like 20 vamps just sitting around laughing and showing each other photos on their phones. And I was like, this is, so gross and weird. And <laughs> um, the special effects are incredible on this show. So it's it's been a really fun experience working on it. Have you worked directly with Guillermo while he's on set at all, or is it mostly? Not yet. No, um, he came on set a few times while we were filming, but because he, he did the pilot, mm -hmm. and I my character comes in episode four, so um, I haven't. He hasn't directed me as yet, but when we were doing the uh, gas station episode, I think it's episode eight, um, he came on set like two o'clock in the morning and, um, you know, we, it was all freezing. It was like minus 30 outside, minus 30 in, in English degrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and uh, we were all exhausted and we'd been running around all the time and like dirty and gross and he comes on at two o'clock in the morning after he's finished filming his other amazing stuff and he was like hey guys and everyone's like Guillermo and it was just <laughs> He was just such a laugh and he was so excited by what we were doing and he'd sit in Video Village and watch a take and then you'd hear him cheering and he, he was just he was just a really excellent guy and you know there's no there's no pretension there. He's just uh, he just loves he just loves magic and filmmaking and it's really inspiring to be around. That's have, wonderful. How did you get involved in this project to begin with? Like what what was was it just like a casting breakdown or did somebody call you and be like, hey, we're changing this guy into a chick. We think you should be that chick. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Um, I, it was so funny because about three days before I got the call, I was I was walking on Hampstead Heath and um, there's like all these beautiful woodlands up there. And I was with a friend saying, God, this looks just like Pan's Labyrinth. And my <laughs> friend hadn't seen it. I didn't know who Guillermo was. I was like, oh my God, and I was like, he's this amazing director. You, I would love to work with him one day. And then literally three days later, I get this call saying, so you've been offered this role and um, it's Guillermo del Toro and Carlton Cruz. And would you, you know, they're going to call you up and try and, you know, can convince you to do it. And I was like, I heard those names. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my agent was like, no, 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 I mean, maybe just play it a little bit cool, Ruta. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I spoke to Carlton and he said his ideas for the character and um, he'd seen some of my work before and he kind of liked the way I'd gone with a, an, another character and he was like, I want you to kind of take that and run with it and, and we'll see what happens. And I was like, this is crazy. Okay, cool. So it was really freeing creatively because they kind of just let me bring stuff and and then they kind of went oh yeah we like that bit let's let's like work more on that so that's kind of how I got involved with it which is completely mental because I was such a lost geek as well so when I'm talking to Carlton on the phone I'm going oh my god oh my god I just want to ask you every question about everything on lost that's wonderful um do you have a favorite speaking of scenes do you have a favorite scene that you uh filmed um any scene with Kevin Durant. <laughs> um, no, uh, I think, yeah, but I can't tell you yet. There's a, there's a scene in the finale, which is pretty epic, and um, and we're all in it. So it's it's a really it took a really long time. I think it's like two days to shoot. I think in it in its entirety. Um, and it's which is a long time in TV land. It's mm -hmm. not a long time in film land, but in TV land, that's a really long time. Um, so yeah, I can't tell you because you, you, you got to watch it later, but, um, but it's really epic and, um, and I get to have some, some fun with swords. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds great. Yeah. That sounds like a, that sounds like a fun scene to watch. Um, yeah. speaking to that though, because, um, because even though we can't talk about the scene itself, what kind of training did they put you through to work with the swords? Did they have like a stunt specialist show you kind of techniques no or was it just like bash their heads? I was terrified because <laughs> oh, I'd had no training. So I was like, I, literally Kevin Durand was my training because he's done loads of films where he gets to be like the bruiser and he's like, he knows how to like fight and stuff. I mean, I don't, he, he would just be like, oh yeah, you can just do this move. And I'd be like, where have you learned this stuff? <laughs> So we did have some amazing stunt people on, on the show and we had like, and the, the vampires were all dancers and they were incredible and they helped me out a lot as well. Um, so it was just a kind of collaboration thing, but there was no formal training. It was just getting on set and then we'd sort of decide what was happening. And then I'd have about five minutes before a take to go, okay, so can someone show me how to use a gun, please? <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that was kind of, I was just sort of thrown in, but that's, that was good because, I mean, Dutch doesn't know how to do any of that. So it would have looked a bit weird if, like, suddenly I was like this pro with swords and guns and stuff. So, I mean, I hope it looks okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> um, also, you did kind of throw a good, a good old right hook into Eldritch Palmer's face. What was it like? <laughs> what was it like uh, filming that scene? Because you have to go through such a wide range of emotions within probably about three minutes. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with Dutch is that she is all over the place. So it does present a few challenges sometimes. But I think that's kind of why they cast me because they see me be quite angsty and things before. <laughs> but um, yeah, that scene, Roger Cross is one of the strongest men I know because he almost choked me in that scene when he's like dragging me out. There's like, I think they used it actually in the episode. There was like me going, no, no, you, you bastard or whatever. And then I was just like, Roger, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. <laughs> um, so that was quite an intense scene to, to shoot. But I just love, I loved, I, lo I love working with those guys as well. It was a really, it was a really fun scene. I love working with all of them. They're all brilliant actors. And David Bradley as well as a rock star. He's awesome. You have a question, Jackie? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> I was just seeing if you did. Um, there's, there, you get basically yelled at by F in one scene and you leave, your character leaves. Um, and for a minute there, you're you're missing for a little bit, and I was like, oh no, they didn't just kill off this character in this mm -hmm. way. No, no. Did you have that same reaction when you were reading <laughs> yeah. the script? I read it and I was like, oh, okay, that was the shortest job ever. <laughs> and um, I, I emailed Regina and I was like, um... <laughs> she was like, don't worry, don't worry, you come back. <laughs> it was a trip and a bread truck. Exit. I was like, okay, phew. <laughs> yeah, I felt so much better when I saw her again because I was like, they can't just do that. They can't. Yeah. I think originally that was the plan. I think um, I think Dutch was going to serve the purpose of the whole internet breaking down and then and then leave. And then they um, did, they wanted another female to come into the show. So I think that was they needed to bring her back for the final episodes. Mm. That makes sense. So with any show, it's always dangerous when you have two main characters who are developing a relationship with each other. And mm -hmm. the entire time we were interviewing Kevin, even though people have read the books, even though that, he, he literally kept saying, if my character makes it to the next season. Right. And he kept saying <laughs> that. Um, I hope to say that we're going to see your character in the next season and not getting bit at the end of this <laughs> finale. <laughs> Is there anything you can tease about the finale tonight about how about what to expect for the for the for the going out with a bang this season? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. No, I just all I can say is that it was pretty epic filming it. Um and I mean I haven't seen it yet. I really can't wait to watch it because it was it was such a good time filming it. Um but I really I really, I really can't. It will just ruin it for you, so I can't. Oh, well, I don't want you to ruin it for yeah, me. Yeah, it's a respect for spoilers, Steve. <laughs> I will respect the spoilers, okay? <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you have any, do you have any uh, films coming out right now that you want to promote and, like, tell us about what, what's going on in London right now or if you live there or you're just filming there? or? Uh, well, I, I live here. This okay. is, well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, yeah, this is my home. And... Uh, I'm, yeah, I just finished doing a film uh, up in Huddersfield with a wonderful director called Jane Linfoot. Um, that currently is called The Incident, but I'm not sure whether that's going to be something else. I don't know. But yeah, just, I, I, I'm just waiting to start on, you know, a few more things. And um, I'm really struggling to not talk about spoilers and things right now. So. <laughs> a variety of things so um yeah i i'm just gonna say i live in london and leave it at that so i don't put my foot in it with anything <laughs> <laughs> that good, sounds great good call where can all your fans find you on twitter and social media and keep in touch with you uh yeah i'm on twitter um mighty underscore minto <laughs> which i uh, was a name that i gave myself when i had about three followers which were like <laughs> my parents um and then now i i have more than that and i'm quite embarrassed by my nickname but you know there it is and uh, and apparently kevin is now one mighty tree and we're like oh we're both tall and mighty that's cool <laughs> <laughs> which that was a cool thing on the show is that because i'm really tall um and i'm always sort of put in a hole in the floor to when I act with people. It was quite cool on this show because everyone's really tall, apart from Mia, but she's like, you know, what she makes up, lacks in height, she makes up for with like amazing acting and feistiness. Um, and, but the rest of the cast are so tall, so I get to wear heels, um, <laughs> which I never ever get to wear ever in life. So that was pretty cool. 
That's awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to call in to us. And I, I really appreciate that we got to chat with you because Dutch is one of my favorite characters. I was so pleased. Oh, Cool. I, I was so pleased to see a character that wasn't because I've read the books. I was so pleased to see a character that wasn't in the books that they made into this character that I felt strongly enough that when she left, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So oh, that's cool. Thank you for saying that. It's really nice. So you I think you've done an excellent job with um, with inserting yourself into this cast and making yourself um, a real live part of it. Thank you. That's really that's really nice to hear. You're welcome. Plus, uh, all the fans like you. All of our YouTube comments are like, "We don't want Kevin. We want we want Dutch." Yeah, we did get some of those <laughs> after we interviewed Kevin. They were like, "But where's Dutch?" We were like, "Really, guys?" Now, now the goal the, the goal here is to get you guys on at the same time. No, um, hopefully hopefully you'll join us for the next season when we do the after show here at After Buzz TV for the next season. Hopefully you're on the next I'm season. Nervous. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have to promote really quick on here that we will have uh, the actress who plays Kelly Goodweather for the after show tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific time on AfterBuzzTV.com for the strain for the finale. Oh my God! The finale. So uh, I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, Ruta. It's been an absolute That's pleasure, great. and I hope we can talk again in the future. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, guys. That has been an interview with Ruta Goodmentes. Um, such a pleasure to hear from her and talk shop, but I think it's time to probably wake up because it's 9.30 a.m. <laughs> no, <we're> so, <laughs> she's ready to go to bed and we're like, whew, whew. All right, Jackie, where can we find you? At 123 Jackie underscore B on Twitter, at 123 Jackie B, all one word on Instagram. And you can find me here at the Sleepy Hollow after show on Tuesday nights with Steve. And uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at uh, Stephen Lemieux, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-L-E-M-I-E-U-X, as well as doing the Sons of Anarchy after show, the finale of The Strain tonight, and Sleepy Hollow with Jackie, Zach, and Matt on Tuesdays. Oh, yeah, I do Sons on Tuesdays, too. Yeah, all right, well, we'll try to get some more people on here for you guys, and make sure you watch the after show tonight with uh, Kelly Goodweather. See you guys next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.